And good morning, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to those, depending on what time you're going to watch and or listen to Sunrise Medication, Medication, excuse me, Sunrise Meditations. Oh my God, it's early. Amen. Welcome to all the iHeart listeners. Amen on iHeart Radio. This is yours truly. This is Apostle Andre Forward, Pastor Andre Forward, just Andre Forward, period. Doesn't matter. Glory be to God. It is Wednesday. Amen. For those of you, could be hump day. Amen. But um, good morning to each and every one of you. Got a real good lesson this morning, on this Wednesday morning, and we're going to get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come humbly and boldly before your throne of grace. We thank you for another opportunity in you, O Heavenly Father. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that we maximize um, this day that we you have granted us. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we are fulfilling your kingdom assignment, your mandate on our in our lives, God. Father, I pray that you touch each and every listener, those that are listening live, those that are listening via replay, Lord God, or iHeartRadio. God, we bless them today in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that you'll cover this lesson today, oh Heavenly Father God, that you will expose truth, God, that we'll be able to receive truth and apply truth in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, we're on chapter 5, out of the book, Fivefold Ministry Made Practical. Amen. Hope you are gaining something out of this. And I'm learning something. Um, good morning again to each and every one of you and those who are listening on iHeartRadio. Um, God bless you. I keep forgetting to record on that show. Amen, amen. But we're going to get started. Uh, while the fivefold minister's purpose, remember yesterday we talked about fivefold minister's purpose is to equip and encourage the body of Christ. And so that their goal is to edify. And if I say the word his or he, you know, we can add her in that too. Okay, uh, and so his goal or their goal is to edify the body, unify the body, see the body conform to the image of Christ, reconcile the body of the body to the word of God and preparing every believer to fulfill it. Amen. That is our goal. That is our goal to do. And so we want to make sure, glory be to God, that we do just just that. Amen. Amen. Everything is according to the word of God and we should be, our aim is should be um, preparing every believer to fulfill God's given destiny. Are, are we really concerned about um, the lives of other people or are we just trying to build something for ourselves so we can have something real nice and cute on our obituary? Mm. See la. All right. Edification. Edification is the first is one of the first goals that we're going to talk about this this morning um, on the show. The ministry of the fivefold is one of edification to the body of Christ. Fivefold ministers are encouragers. We should be encouraging people, Amen. The same way we've been encouraged, the same way that we have those who speak into our lives, pour into our lives. That should be the same thing we should be doing for other people. Um, the fact that we love people and desire to see them obtain all that the Lord is calling them to do. You should be excited each and every day and even asking God for opportunities where you can pour into someone's life. Um, encourage them, help them, um, <laughs> help, yeah, encourage them, just help encourage them. We all need encouragement. Um, even in the body of Christ, we go through some things that sometimes we don't expect that we go through. And yet still, we need ourselves to be encouraged. Encouragers need encouragers. Amen. We do. Um, we're not always on the mountaintop of Happyville. Amen. Because we're, we're excited about encouraging people. It's not like we are um, immune to not having things, you know, going on in our life where uh, we we don't need a push. You know, we don't need um, something. Um, to lift us up when things are hitting at us. They want to see believers encouraged in walking in victory. If this is not you, <laughs> if you don't have a desire to see people encouraged and walking in victory, then you may not be one of these type of ministers. And you may be self-absorbed as well. Probably one of the most discouraging aspects for a fivefold minister is to see people with great potential settling for a good deal less um, when people when we see what's in people and we try to push them we try to encourage them we try to give them some form form of guidance and yet they are they fall short they don't they don't have the zeal they don't uh, sometimes they can't even see what we see in them 
And so we do everything we can to try to bring that out, um, to encourage them, to edify them, to get them to get going in this. But yet some people just don't. And it is discouraging. It's discouraging for me. Um, and preferably it is for you to know that one of your brothers and sisters in Christ have so much potential to add um, in their role to the kingdom of God and yet have no desire. Um, maybe they've been beat up. Maybe they've been been abused. Um, you know, there's a lot of that in the church today. Um, so it is sad when you see someone's great potential and then they end up and leave this earth and have not fulfilled anything. That is a horrible. To me, that's horrible um, to see such. So especially when we see our children and we, we know we can um, discern the God-given gifts that they have, and yet uh, we're trying to mold them, trying to shape them, and they're still trying to, you know, live their own lives. And that's not, um, it's sad because we know because we've been there. And so we don't want our children to go through the same things that we've been through, but yet still sometimes they have to, they have to go their own path, and we just pray that what we've instilled to them will, will remain so that it won't depart from them. Um, sometimes it's a matter of fully surrendering themselves to the Lord's plan for their lives. Um, they can they can know what gifts they have. They may even know their calling, but they won't surrender. They won't surrender completely to God for for them to fully see the manifestation of what God has called them to do. Um, they just won't die to themselves. They have a hard time dying to themselves. Um, don't want to totally surrender to the will of God. Um, still find a lot of attractions of the world. And maybe their own um, proclivities is um, really have them bound um, where they don't, um, they don't care to really surrender. Where the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is still um, number one in their lives. Um, Other times they refuse to deal with trouble issues in their lives or they are discouraged with life. Um, Sometimes knowing knowing what they're fighting every day is very discouraging to them. Um, A lot of times we don't have to point out someone's faults or someone's shortcomings because they already know and they're constantly dealing with them. Some things could be um, generationally passed down and... um, you know that, you know, family members, you know, they're all doing it and it's just, you know, it's just the way of life. And you know that it's different, but yet it's still a battle for you to try to break through um, to do the things that you know God's called for you to do. But they're just they're troubling issues. Um, so we have to have the, we really have to have a lot of patience. Uh, we've got to do some intercession. Inter- <laughs> intercession. Uh, we have to do that. Um because they probably can't pray for themselves, so we need to pray for them. Um, a five-fold minister will encourage people like this to press on. And so we should be a constant push. We should be a constant push in their lives, um, encouraging them, directing them, um, being there for them, and, and really having the gift to listen. Having a gift to listen to what they're going through so that maybe God can give us some strategies on how to really help, help them come through whatever they're dealing with. The Bible advises us to encourage one another daily. Have you ever wondered why Paul tells us to do that? It's because we can easily get discouraged. We can easily get discouraged. As strong as we may be to other people, they don't know what we go through behind closed doors unless we're transparent enough to let them know. Um, but we can, be, we can be discouraged easily. And so we have to have those that um, are comrades that we can um, lean on, talk to, express uh, without fear of being um, without fear of being exposed, being accepted. Um, you know, I talk a lot about my brother Clifton, but we can we can air everything out, um, man to man, no nothing to withhold, and we're there to encourage one another. We're not going to pacify if we're doing something wrong that we shouldn't be. So um, that's something. That is great when you need that. You need you need someone that you can be transparent. You can be transparent with, and they can be transparent with you, uh, whether you like it or not. But it's for your good. So, and keep that in mind. The enemy is always trying to undermine Christians because he 
Because if he can dishearten them, he can keep them from fulfilling their destiny. And that's what he wants to do. Remember, we talked about this the other day. He wants to trip you up. He wants to trip you up in your your journey of fulfilling what God has you to do. Because if you complete your journey, then you're no he sees you as Jesus. And he we already know Jesus defeated him. But he sees us like that because we're fulfilling what God has called us to do. All right, so he, he's after us, and when you know that he's after you, and when you know that you're getting all these things coming up against you, you have to know that you're about to complete your assignment in God. And so he's doing everything you everything he can to cause you to stumble, to cause you to be distracted, to cause you to lose focus. Um, and he'll use those that are closest to you, dearest to you. And we have to make sure that we don't get so caught up in those things. And remember to keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the assignment. Uh, because once we complete it, evidently we're going to cause damage to um, the kingdom of darkness. So be mindful of that, that we're not so distracted, um, easily distracted, you know, and be be alert. Be alert of what's happening around you. Amen. And how it can affect what God is calling you to do. Um, Hebrews three thirteen through 14. Be encouraged one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. A faithful ministry will encourage people so that they do not become hardened to sin or settle for second best. Encouragement just flows out of them. They are optimistic, they are optimistic because they have the heart of Jesus in them. They believe the best and encourage people to give their best. It's just what we do. Amen. We we should be naturally encouraging people and, and keep you know really encourage them to, to keep fighting, not to give up. Um, if you share Anybody who knows me, if you share what you got going on, I'm going to do everything I can to remind you of you know, what you told me and to make sure that you're fulfilling what you need to do um, in God. So have to keep you optimistic. And sometimes we, we're here to give you sometimes a different look at the situation, give you a different perspective on how to look at things. Sometimes we, we look at things in the wrong perspective, and so we do get discouraged and we get disheartened, and so we don't want to continue anymore. Unification. Another goal of fivefold ministers is to bring us to the unity of the faith, according to Ephesians four thirteen. In today's church, various church doctrines differ and are present in a way that often leads to division. And we know that we know that um, denominations separate us. Sunday is the most separate, separated day of the year, the most um, divided day of the year, and um, the enemy loves that. He loves the division that we have against one another. Five old ministers have the assignment of bringing the church to a unity of faith. In the midst of this apparent lack of unity, they are kingdom-minded individuals looking for areas that we can agree on rather than areas that bring disunity. <clears throat> and unfortunately, that's what we do. We're, we're looking for things that, that separate us, uh, and we're, we're, too, we're so busy debating Jesus. We're so busy debating on what on on the in the interpretations of our doctrinal differences in beliefs or whatever, and uh, we're not doing anything to come together as one. You know, regardless of what denomination, we're still supposed to go out and make disciples. You know, so we're supposed to do. There's still a mandate for us to do, regardless um, of the denominational differences. And yet, and then we want fellowship with one another because the first thing we ask each other is, first thing we ask each other is, what denomination are you? So we can have a, we can have insight on what you believe in. And then that's going to determine if I'm going to fellowship with you or not. Not just the fact that you, you know, you're my brother or sister in Christ, period. I don't care what denomination you are. This should, we still should be able to come together because there's so much that we need to fight against um, Satan's kingdom. <clears throat> but we're so busy fighting against ourselves. And so it's not strange for people that don't want to uh, become sons and daughters in the body of Christ because we're too busy fighting with each other. There's no unity. We have no unity. And so <clears throat> to be looking for kingdom-minded people who understand that it's not about me. It's about advancing God's kingdom, that we all have a purpose. We all have a, a given lane um, to run this journey in. And so even yesterday, <clears throat> doing one of the in-house Bible studies, they allowed us to talk about each other's ministries, and we all had a common goal is that it's just this right here is to see people fulfill um, their purpose and their destiny. You know, despite what, what towns we're in, despite um, even being in the same town, one ministry cannot do it all for all the people in that, in that 
particular city. So we all need each other. And so we're sharing how we can be <clears throat> how we can be effective with one another, how we can come together and, and do something great together. And regardless of who headlines or whatever the event is, you know, and so it's almost like a almost like we treat it almost like a concert. We got you got the headliner and then you got all these other groups that come on first. And sometimes we do that. You know, we look and see who's on the flyer and then that will determine if we come or not. Instead of, look, they're doing something for the kingdom of God. I'm coming. And so, you know, we pick and choose. We know who we like, who we don't like. And we won't support unless it's their own. If it's our own, we're going. If it's not, if somebody else is doing something, and they won't go. And so it's um, it's sad, but it's true. Five-fold ministers must be mindful of the larger picture that not all Christians interpret the body exactly alike. Okay? It's a, it's a fact. We don't. But this may seem like an impossible task, but it can be done through Christ as he works through the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers and churches of various theologies. Fivefold ministers have non-negotiables, but they also have the rest of the body of mind and try to and try to major on the major things and not get snagged on the little things that so easily divide the body of Christ. And so why are we going back and forth worrying about if you speak in tongues, don't speak in tongues. If you baptize in Jesus' name, don't baptize in Jesus' name. That's that's neither here nor there. Okay, according to Romans 10 tonight, that's neither here nor there. But still, why can't we come together, amen, and still do some things that is needed in the community? But we, won't, we can't even come together and pray, you know, because of denominational issues. It makes no sense. But this is what's happening in the body of Christ. You know, this is us over here. We're going to stay over here. And we're only going to focus on what's in the four walls. This is our thing right here. You know, what about going out there witnessing, and trying to evangelize in the community? Because why? The common denominator that we all have is Jesus Christ. So why can't we just focus on Jesus and all this other man-made mistakes of interpretation that we go back and forth? Why can't we just lay those aside and go out there and try to win souls? So as Christians, we are exhorted to keep the unity of the brethren, Ephesians 4, 3. I think that Paul is saying here is that we have unity in Christ when, when we get saved and, when, and we should not allow our own petty ideologies to bring this unity. And that is exactly what we do to bring this unity. Confirmation. Jesus was faced with just about every situation known to man, and he was able to deal with these issues in a redemptive way. Fivefold ministers help believers become conformed to Christ so they begin to grasp how to handle life circumstances and situations in a manner that they will build the kingdom. I want to put a pin right there. Uh, we, should not be, we should not be ministering our own um, philosophies, um, our own theories. It should all come from the word of God. Um, I always say I'm, I'm weary of people who's always asking for amen because I don't know what you're trying to mix in with the word of God to get to get me to agree with you. Um, I shouldn't have to give you an amen to help you preach. <laughs> Just do what you're supposed to do. And if you line up with the word of God, most likely you'll get an amen. You'll get a yes. You'll get something. But all this, well, you know, if y'all don't help me preach, I'll be here all day. Well, I guess so. <laughs> I guess you will. Uh, so, you know, we have to be mindful of that. Just stick to the Word of God. Just stick to, your, just stick to the Word of God. Um, sometimes we use too many personal examples of our own lives. And sometimes it's needed based on, based on the audience so they can connect with you. But in the end, it should still come back directly to the Word of God. Well, matter of fact, we don't need your personal opinions. Hey man, if it's not lined up with the word of God, don't need your personal opinions. Keep them to yourself. Don't need them. Don't need them. Jesus did not give his personal opinions. You know, the pulpit should not be an area where you attack people. Because you're mad or you're angry if somebody bothers you. That's not the place to do it. But we have leaders, we have pastors out there. Well, they'll tell you, if you don't like it here, leave. You know. So they think this is my kingdom and this is how I'm going to do it. No regard, no regard to the sheep. They're all caught up in themselves, you know, so they don't have the heart of God. They don't have the compassion of God and they need some deliverance. 
Fivefold ministers have the ability to speak in a way that brings the Lord's conviction to us as believers, exposing areas in our lives where we are not conformed to the one who made us. They do it in a way that encourages us and causes us to desire change. When you present the word of God in a way that God gives it to you, it should bring about um, some form of conviction to have us conform more to Christ. And, you know, he's the one that created us. And so not bashing over the head or whatever else, but with the heart of God. And if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will do the work. All you have to do is just be the mouthpiece. Uh, we can't change anyone. Only God can. But we have to be able to discern what word that God wants to speak to his people and deliver just that. Um, not thinking that um, that we've come up with a message or something um, on our own. And that's not God. Want, that's not what God wants you to deliver. And so we want to know the now of God. I say this often. We want to know the now of God. What is it that God wants to say to his people on this day, on this particular day? He knows who's going to be there. He knows their needs. He knows their hearts. He knows all these things. So as ministers, we should be seeking the face of God or what God wants to say to his people. Not what I want to say, not what you want to say, but what does God want to say to his people? And sometimes that can be a hard word, it can be a harsh word, but that's what God wants to say, not because you have a little pet peeve about churches or certain people. No, that's irrelevant. You know, you take that up in prayer. But what is it that God wants to say to his people? If you want to be an effective minister, um, regardless of what level you're on, you should be seeking God's face on that. Uh, Christ's desire and goal is that we are all conformed to him, ain't right? I mean, we should not be trying to conform people toward us, to look like us, to act like us, to talk like us, none of that stuff. All of it should point back to Christ, all of it. Sometimes people never reach their full potential because they refuse to deal with issues in their life. They will not conform at all, none whatsoever. Um, so they'll never reach. You know, we said that the richest place in the world is the cemeteries because they're full of people who have not fulfilled their potential in life that God had um, put in their bellies. Okay, so they refuse to deal with the issues. Um, they continue to live they want, the way they want to live. Um, they just don't want to change. They just don't want to do it. Um, sometimes it could be because of um, troubling issues in their lives, and it's just been a lifelong battle. But we can't give up on those. As long as someone is still alive, they're still a living soul, um, God created them. And whether they're saved or unsaved, we need to be encouragers to them. We need to speak life to them. We need to pull them out of darkness. We, um, we are ambassadors of Christ. We are ministers of reconciliation. And so since we've been reconciled to Christ, we need to do the same thing to other people. So just because you may not have a pulpit platform, there's a pulpit on your job. There's a pulpit at the gas station, at the grocery store. There's a pulpit at your family dinners. There, there's, you got a pulpit everywhere. Okay? you got a pulpit everywhere. So, we're going to look at Moses for an example. Um, did Moses fulfill his God-given destiny? No. Although he was ordained of the Lord to take the children of Israel into the promised land, he was unable to do so because he refused to deal with the anger that's in his life. It is his own personal issues. Moses, the great Moses, his own personal issues that caused him not to go in the promised land. He was only allowed to look into the promised land from the mountain. He was not able to fulfill his God-given call. God tried to deal with his anger on a, number, on a number of occasions, even taking him away for 40 years to the desert to deal with his anger issue. Even so, Moses' anger remained an area in which he struggled and refused to completely re relinquish to God. He didn't lose favor with God, though, but, the certain, but, the certainly, but he certainly did fulfill all that the Lord had planned for him to do. God knew that he wasn't going to go into the promised land because he knew he had an issue. But yet he still had favor. God still favors us, even though you and I got issues. But don't we have to still, we still want to work, we still want God to work out these issues in us so we can get to what God has promised us. So God knows the end of us, but I think we can help that along <laughs> if we just do right and, if, and we just surrender. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever it is, don't don't keep going to one service after another. And you know you still got something you're dealing with. Stop being ashamed. Stop allowing the enemy to cause you to feel shameful because you go up to the altar where that you need prayer. You need deliverance. You need some inner healing. Get what you have to get. Get it so that you can be free 
And you can totally surrender to God and fulfill the mandate that's on your life. Mm. Others, I mean, our sin usually does not keep the Lord from using us. Sin is not hard for, for the Lord to deal with. In fact, he dealt with our sin once and for all on the cross. The thing that most hinders us from fulfilling our destiny in God is our own unwillingness. It's our own unwillingness, your own unwillingness, my own unwillingness to deal with the issues in our lives, if you will, our independence. We want to be so independent that we don't want to surrender to God. But yet we want to do the things of God and we want God to bless us and we want God to elevate us and we want, we want God to do yada, yada, yada. We want to do all those things, but yet we still want to be independent. We still want to tell people off, cuss people off. We still want to do what we want to do, living outside of the will of God, but yet we want to be used by God. We don't want to surrender. It's our unwillingness. It's your pride that does not want to die. You allow other people to talk you out of uh, you. You will excuse me. You allow other people to talk you out of doing things that you know you're supposed to do for God, because you're more concerned about pleasing them than you are about ple about pleasing your heavenly Father. You can't serve two. You can't serve two, two masters. You can't serve them. So instead of allowing the Lord to come into our lives and facing our sin head on, we hold Him at at arm's length, hoping. That we can fix it ourselves. After all, this little sin will not keep me out of heaven, we tell ourselves. You ever tell yourself, well, this little thing is okay. God's okay with this. And you just keep on doing it. Like he, like he doesn't see you, you know, <laughs> you know, like it's not in his word not to do this. But you'll justify your reasons to continue to do it. Uh, one man once said, we pay, we pay doctors hundreds of dollars to tell us what's wrong with us. But we go to God and say, just tell me everything's going to be all right. Five more ministers help us to deal with those things in our lives that hold us back. So our hearts turn afresh to the Lord. They keep us, they help us to reach a new level of maturity as we conform to Christ so that we can become fully equipped to handle any situation in life. If you are able to allow God to deal with your issues... And bring you and bring it bring you to a complete place of wholeness. You can go back to the same people that God just healed you from, and use that as as God's platform to minister to. So everything that you've been through in life, it wasn't you know we always say it wasn't just for you. And even though when we're going through it, it is just for me. But when you, when you open up your eyes fully to see, that could be the area God wants you to minister to people, help people out. You know. You may have been in, in jail for a period of time. And so now you have a passion for those. And so God would give you some form of platform to build on to help those who've been incarcerated, to help them get a job or whatever the case may be, just as an example. Uh, rec reconciliation of the word. A fivefold minister is not just concerned about your salvation. Um, they are concerned that you obtain your full potential in God. And the only way that you will realize your potential is by being conformed to the word of God. How else are you going to find out who you are in God if you don't conform to the word of God? Read the word of God. Um, meditate on the word of God. Five ministers ground us in the word so that we are not tossed to and fro by everyone. A doctrine, the word of the Lord is their plumb line. And they minister from that base of authority. They desire not only that we would be conformed to Jesus, but that the word of God be, be formed in us so that the situations and circumstances in life do not spin us out of control. So the more we conform to the word of God, we know what to do in all these situations because there's, there's not anything in the Bible that does not cover something that we, that we encounter every day in life. It's just up to us if we choose to use it. It's just that simple. So the goal is that we are grounded in the word, ready to speak against every false doctrine, not easily fooled by cunning, demonic, or fleshly thoughts or ideas, Growing and maturing in our relationship with Jesus and each other. And that's what happens when you become grounded in the word of God. Okay. It tells us to cast out every vain imagination. Amen. We have examples when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. He used the word of God against Satan. You know. So we have all these tools that's in the word of God. We have all these directions. We have all these instructions. To counter what we face every day. And so if you don't know, or, or even if you're struggling, but you know it's in the word of God, then you contact someone, you know, you contact God, of course, but you can contact someone to help you in this area. 
you know, what scripture is it? Because I'm dealing with this and I need to find this particular scripture on that so I can be strengthened and I can have some direction and some guidance on how to overcome this. For a five-fold minister, there's never a question whether the word is, rev- is relevant. It is, it is as, rev- as relevant today as it was the day it was written. The five-fold minister's desire is that the word would take pre- preeminence in our lives and that our lives would be reconciled to the word and the author of it. So our whole life is based on the word of God, and it should be. Our actions, our thoughts, um, what we do, how we treat people, it all should it all should be it all should come back to the word of God. It shouldn't be based upon um, how you was brought up and your genealogy and all these other things. And you know, mama was mean, and you know, and I'm mean because my mama's mean. And you know, we come up with all these excuses, amen, to do what we do. But you want to be a child of God. It doesn't work that way. Five fold ministers are able to teach and preach with authority. Um, they know who they are in Christ and they know and understand the word of God. They know the authority of the word of God and are able to stand on it, allowing the word to speak for itself. As I said earlier, just speak the word. Can't nobody argue with the word. If they want to, it's because they don't want to conform. But if you just speak the word as God has instructed you prayerfully, and that's, that's the case, then it'll speak for itself. Their goal is to bring the church to maturity because a mature church is a strong church. Okay? Don't be worried about your, your um, how you're going to end your sermon with, with hoopology. Amen? Just deliver the word of God. Just deliver the word of God and let it cut where it needs to cut. On um, the preparation, five four ministers have the goal of bringing us to the measure of statute which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Um, their, goal is, is a, their goal is to prepare us for ministry. With fivefold ministers con- contribute their gifts. When they contribute their gifts, believers receive an impartation so each one can be better equipped to fulfill God's call on his or her life. We go back again to, are you in a ministry where people around you don't even know their purpose? Are they preparing you for ministry? Amen. Or are they just keeping you locked in with a happy Sunday morning service? I mean, some Sunday morning sermon. Is that all that you're getting out of this? You got your A and B selection. You know, you got people that pray. You got your systematic service going on. But are you being prepared for ministry is the question. Is the ministry or the fellowship that you're in, is it a five-fold based ministry? Where you're being trained, equipped, and being prepared to send to be sent forth to do ministry. Something to think about. The heart and desire to to the five-fold minister is to expand the ministry of others. When they are ministering and see that people are being changed and transformed, they become ecstatic. There's nothing to me a greater gift than to see people grow into what God has called for them to do. And you can see the zeal in their eyes. Um, They walk with with confidence. They know um, their assignment and they're going forth. And so if you're able to, whether to plant the seed or give the water, we know God does the increase. But be one of the two. Either, you know, plant a seed in them, a um, seed of encouragement, um, a seed of edification, maybe water of what something's already put inside of them. But God would add an increase, but be a part, either one. I mean, don't be the one that's speaking negative to them. Don't be the one that will um, tear them down instead of build them back up. Um, as a fivefold teacher, their greatest desire is that people would grasp the same revelation that they have. When they do, they get pumped up spiritually. So, you know, when you share the word of God with someone and you see the light bulb going off, it causes you to be excited because they are grasping something. They are, they are obtaining something that you have tried to um, convey to them. And it, it does make you happy. It, it does encourage you that you're able and, and you have been successful with, with God's glory, with God's grace. I mean, to be able to help someone see the light. Amen. And so what you did was because how you ministered the word of God, you helped reveal the blinders off of their eyes for something that Satan did not want them to see. (laughs) Jesus was excited to leave earth because he knew that the comforter would come and reside in the hearts of men. A fivefold minister's desire is to see others grow up in their full potential, prepare for life in all 
circumstances that come their way. Jesus was never shaken by life's circumstances, but used every circumstance in life as an opportunity to minister God's heart and bring about a change. And we should be the same way. We should be looking for opportunities, looking for circumstances to be able to minister to someone, to lift them up, to edify, to encourage them, to help push them along the way. Those are great opportunities. Those are one thing. That's something that you can pray for before you take off on a day. Lord, open up opportunities for me to, to minister to your people. You know, could be a family member. could be someone that's stranded. Um, you could do a random act of kindness when you're in the drive through line and say, well, whatever their order is behind me, I'm going to pay for it today. They don't have to know you anything. It's just a random act of kindness. A ministers, uh, a fivefold minister is a catalyst. A fivefold minister has no desire to do all the ministry himself. I hope not. I hope that's not you. You know that believes that ministry can't go forth unless it's just you and you alone. Um, there's their desire to see others trained and equipped and released for the work of the ministry. Um, they enjoy watching others grow in God. They thrive on preparing others so that they too are able to minister to those around them on a daily basis. If we're able to do this, then that helps take the load off of us. If we're out there trying to train and equip and send forth people, prepare them for ministry, then you have people that can walk alongside of you. Paul didn't do his ministry all by himself. He had a ministry team with him. He did not go through all these journeys all by himself. He wasn't a long ranger. There was people that he groomed. There was people that was there with him that went through all the hardships that he went through. And so don't try to do this by yourself. You're going to wear yourself out. You're going to be burnt up, burnt out, and you're going to, you're going to give up. Or your heart's going to harden for the people because you think they're not moving in the time frame they sh that you should move. But a lot of us still ain't moving in the time frame God is telling us to move in. And so how are we going to be hard on somebody else? And you know you're not doing everything God has called for you to do. Uh, the five-fold ministers have a passion to see individuals take the church to the people. Their goal is not to just draw people around them, but to equip people who are around them and send them out into their own communities, their own communities to minister to their family, friends, neighborhoods, and people in their workplace. And one way to have a church, a healthy church, is to have healthy families. Healthy families create a healthy church. If the families are not healthy and they're dysfunctional, and you got all these dysfunctional families coming to the church. The church is dysfunctional. And so we have to minister the word of God so families can become healthy. They become whole. The church, the local assembly becomes stronger. Amen. So what we have to do is we have to minister to all the dysfunction that's going on in the families. But if the families are strong. You know, if men are taking their places in the home. And if the men are not there, the women are, are doing what they're supposed to do. Amen. To have a God-given home then that strength of that home comes to the church. And so you got all these families that are strong, and so it makes the, it makes the church strong, which, which is going to make the community strong. It's going to make the city strong, and so on and so forth. So it's critical for that. A five-fold minister is not, is not out to build his own ministry. I pray that it's not. I pray that you're not out there trying to build your own. I know we're in this day and time of building our brands and so on and so forth, trying to leave a legacy and, you know, all this other stuff. But... It's all about the kingdom of God. And if you keep doing this, and if I have time to get to it, but if you keep doing this, God would God will launch you out in due time. But just do his work. Do what he's called for you to do. Amen. He wants to build the body of Christ, equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. In so doing, their ministry will be built, and they will experience the opportunity of being a catalyst in the lives of others where... <clears throat> If you focus locally, focus locally about where you at, what assembly that you're a part of, focus locally, and then throughout that, you'll be elevated, you know, so on and so forth, where you can be to the nations, you can be international, so on and so forth. Uh, five-fold ministries, five-fold ministers model ministry. Sometimes five-fold ministers think they have grown beyond actually doing Amen. They don't want to do the work anymore, but they want to be instructed, they want to be a teacher, pretty much they don't want to get their hands dirty anymore. Okay, and now they should just be involved in equipping or training others for ministry. Although fivefold ministers have the job of equipping the saints for ministry, they also continue to model ministry themselves. What's the best way to model for people to see what you're doing? 
they're witnessing. Jesus didn't sit back and give instructions. Give instructions. He did it. He did what he was doing. He whatever he was telling them, he was doing it. He was he was the live example of doing ministry. Uh, for example, evangelists should not be content to tell other people um, in a church setting how to evangelize. They should also be actively involved in bringing people to Jesus in their day-to-day life. In this way, they are modeling evangelistic ministry. So if you sit here and you think you're an expert on evangelism, but you're not actually out there evangelism, what kind of model are you? We normally think of fivefold gifts as one to be used to help believers, but fivefold ministers who model ministry in their daily lives will reach out to non-believers with their gifts. A lot of us are afraid to minister to people that are not saved. We we stay in this little this little safe place that we think is safe, and we just minister to one another all day long. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it, but what about about going out? <laughs> And talking to other people that are not saved. Ask them, do they have a relationship with Christ? One way to, to witness, just keep asking them questions. You keep asking them questions, they have to think. Then you ask them another question. Ask them another. That's one easy way to, to witness. Just ask them questions. Huh. Mm-mm-mm. All right, when you really think about it, wouldn't it be more important to tell the non-believer who sits, bef- who sits beside you on an airplane what God has to say to him or prophesy over them than the person in church who hears God on a regular basis? Which one's more important? The, per- the stranger that you sit next to or the person you see every day that's getting the word of God? You don't know the person. You know the person sitting next to you in church. They're getting the word every day. Every time they come in, they're getting the word. But you don't know about the person sitting next to you. You don't know, you know, at work. There might be people you don't know. Do you know that they know Jesus? Do they have a relationship? You don't know. So why not ask them? God gave us these gifts to bring others into the kingdom. Five-fold ministers should be actively using their gifts to minister to those who do not know him. Modeling ministry is just as important as teaching methodology or theology. Jesus not only taught his disciples what to do, but like I said, he also showed them what to do. And we're about done. Yep, we're about done. All right. Um, next, tomorrow we're going to get into each gift uh, specifically. Like tomorrow we're going to talk about the apostles and what they govern. And then we're going to do the prophets and the uh, evangelist, pastor, teacher. We're going to get into that tomorrow. So, after, I mean, apostles are like fathers and mothers who impart to the body of Christ and raise them up as sons and daughters in the faith. Okay? Apostles. So are like fathers and mothers who impart to the body of Christ and raise them up as sons and daughters in the faith. Prophets bring supernatural revelation and insight, giving vision of the times and seasons of God so that saints know what to do. Teachers teach the word of God with with simplicity and wisdom. Pastors nurture the body of Christ with counseling, clothing them with Christ-like armor and garments. And the evangelist imparts zeal for souls to be saved and equipped and and, and equip the saints with wisdom and anointing in winning the loss. So that's just a quick summary synopsis of um, those fivefold gifts. And like I said, tomorrow morning, we will talk about apostles govern and we'll go into the whole chapter is dealing with the apostles. So it will be interesting for those of you who believe in them and those of you who don't. So tune in. Amen. Tune in. So God bless you. Thank you all for listening um, this morning and taking the time to um, tune in to Sunrise Meditations, whether you're listening live through Facebook or through iHeartRadio. Yes, we are live on iHeartRadio and you can download the app iHeartRadio and you can just um, in the search box type in Sunrise Meditations and you'll see a whole list of things, um, lessons and episodes that I've done there. So. God bless you. I'm out of here. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care. Thank you for listening to Sunrise Meditations. As God's word has shed light on your path, situation, and circumstance, may it continue to strengthen your relationship with God and see your faith grow as God reveals more of who he is to you. Apostle Andre can be contacted at andrefullwood.com. Join us every morning, 7 a.m., Monday through Friday, Eastern Time, for Sunrise Meditations.